What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. So before we go on and talk about what we're going to do in this video, did you check my two short videos yet? If not, I'll put the link on the right so that you can click it and find out first. Okay. After you finish watching the two short videos, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about why we're allowed to use those tricks to help us finding out whether an integer is a multiple of 13 or 17 or not. Are you ready for it? Here we go. So first, let's pick any integer. Let's call it k in general. And of course, in this case, we want k to be at least two digits. So it could be three digits, four digits, as long as it's not one digit. Again, why? Because if it is only one digit, we already know that it cannot be a multiple of 13 or a multiple of 17 unless it is zero. So in this case, it is very quick and we don't even need any tricks to check it. So if we know that the integer that we have is at least two digits, we can now rewrite the integer as k equals 10a plus b, where b is the very last digit that we have, or we call it the ones digit. The ones digit. And then for the a that we have in this expression, it will be everything else that we have. Meaning that if, for example, have an integer such as one, two, three, four, five, then what we have is the last digit five will be our B. And then for the remaining part, one, two, three, four, or 1,234 will be our A. And keep in mind, we, uh, if we split it this way, we know that both A and B are also integers. Okay, so once we know how the setup works, here's what we're going to do. First, let's talk about the trick that we check for multiple of 13. In the short video, I claimed that we can multiply the last digits by four and then add the result 4a to just the a part. Excuse me, 4b to the a part without the 10. So in that case, we're saying that if a plus 4b is a multiple of 13. So I'm going to use the notation here. 13 divides uh, a plus 4, uh, 4b. Then the original number k is also a multiple of 13. And in fact, it is actually by conditional. It is an if and only if. But why is that true? How can we actually get this conclusion here? Here's how. So now if we go back to the original number k, as we claim that k can be rewritten as 10a plus b, since we were in want to get the 4b, right? What we are going to do is we're going to multiply this expression or this equation by four. So in this case, we're going to multiply the whole thing by four to give us 4k equals four times 10, giving us 40a plus four times b, which is 4b. Then we're now going to break the 40 into something plus something. And since we're trying to check whether the integer is a multiple of 13, we might as well just divide 40 by 13 and see what we will get. In this case, we will get three times 13 plus one. And we now can just break it into two parts and distribute the A so that we get 13 times three A plus here now we have a plus 4b which is what we 
have here. Now finally, we can see the remainder part is something that is what we are trying to check in the trick. Why can we claim it this way? Well, because let's think about it. Suppose this remainder is equal to zero. Or in other words, if this part right here is a multiple of 13, then we can just rewrite this as 13 times some number, let's call it n. Meaning that now 4 times k or 4k will be 13 times something plus 13 times some other thing, giving us 13 times 3a plus n. And clearly, 3a is an integer since a is already an integer by given. And here we claim that n is also an integer because we say that a plus 4b is a multiple of 13, meaning that it will be 13 times some integers. So in this case, we have 3a plus n, which is also an integer, and we get 13 times an integer to show that 4k is in fact a multiple of 13. So that we can claim that k is also a multiple of 13. And again, how do we know that? Since we know that 13 is a prime, 4 is not a multiple of 13, then in order to have the product being a multiple of 13, the other term must be a multiple of 13. Good. So, how do we prove the other direction? We can do the same thing. Since now we want to show that if this is a multiple of 13, this is also a multiple of 13. We can do the proof this way. Suppose that k is a multiple of 13. So again, we can let k be 13 times some integers. Let's call it n2. Then we're again trying to get to this expression here where the left hand side is 4 times k. We're now going to multiply both sides by k to give us 4k is in that uh, in fact equals 13 times 4n, 4n2 in this case. So in now, in this case, we can just substitute this expression to our left hand side and give us 13 times some integers, 4n, 4n2 equals 13 times 3a plus the remaining parts a plus 4b and of course we can just subtract 13 times 3a on both sides so that we end up with the remaining part a plus 4b equals 13 times 4n2 minus 13 times 3a and we can of course factor out the 13 to give us the following once again n2 is an integer by our setup and a is also an integer by our setup at the beginning so the difference will also be an integer meaning that the remaining part a plus 4b is equal to 13 times some integers in other words it's a multiple of 13 so we in fact actually prove that if we can uh, if we check out uh, uh, if we check that a plus 4b is a multiple of 13 then the original number n is also a multiple of 13 and the other around is also true so that also means that if we use this trick and find out that this result a plus 4b is not a multiple of 13 we can claim that the original number that we start off k is also not a multiple of 13. A similar proof can be done to show that the trick for uh, checking multiple of 17 uh, also holds. So here is how we're going to do it. I'll quickly prove, uh, <clears throat> I'll quickly prove it uh, by skipping a lot of steps, but write down the key steps. Again, the idea is 
almost the same. So in the second short video, we claim that we need to check uh, the integer by taking five times of the last digits, meaning we have 5b, and then we're going to subtract this 5b from the remaining digits, a. Okay, so we're claiming that if this remainder part, a minus 5b is divisible by 17, if and only if 17 is a factor of the original integer, k. Again, how should we prove it? So we're going to do the same setup. Suppose that um, we start from here. We have k equals 10a plus b. So seeing that we want to get 5b at the end, um, actually minus 5b, doesn't really matter. 5b at the end uh, in, our, uh, in our setup, we will try to multiply both sides by 5 to give us 5k is equal to now 5 times 10 giving us 50 and plus of course we are multiplying by 5 so we get 5b good so next we want to turn the plus 5b to minus 5b again we can just multiply both sides by negative 1 so that we will get negative 5k is equal to negative 50a minus 5b. Now, how can we turn 50 into something that, uh, how do we turn negative 50 into positive 1a? So again, think of uh, uh, the division uh, of, or multi um, the multiples of 17. We have 17 times 3 is going to give us um, 51. So how should I say it? Or how should we make it? We're going to break the negative 50 into negative 51 plus 1. And then of course everything else will still be the same. So that, let me put it this way. We now see that <clears throat> we will be able to break it into negative 51a plus the remaining part, which is 1 times a minus 5b. And again, it is quite clear that negative 51a is a multiple of 17 because 51 is 3 times 17. So here we can rewrite as 17 times negative 3a and clearly this is a multiple of 17 because negative 3a is an integer. So we see that this remainder part is a multiple of 17 if and only if the original number is also multiple of 17. Again, here is a little bit uh, subtle thing that I didn't really mention even in the last proof. We can claim that because we're multiplying by negative 5 or positive 5, depends how you want to say it. And the fact that negative 5 or positive 5 is not a multiple of 17 is very important because again, we can only claim that k is a multiple of 17 because negative 5 is not a multiple of 17. And in order to have the whole product to be uh, a multiple of 17, at least one of the factors must be a multiple of 17 as 17 is a prime. So good. This is how we actually get the two tricks that I showed in the short videos. Hopefully you like it. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like. And if you want to find out more of my videos, go to subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification bell below so that you won't miss any of my new videos. I'll see you guys next time.